How's it going everybody? Today I want to show you my new shark base. This allows you to catch fish instantly. I was netting it around 3100 to 3200 scrap per hour doing this. Compared to my last automatic shark farm, this thing is super easy to build. My last base was pretty inefficient, I'll admit, and I don't think anybody would want to build it. This is pretty compact and easy to build. I'll show you exactly where to stand so you can get the right slope every time. I also want to thank everybody for coming and watching these videos. These ideas and these videos do take me a long time. I have to sit in servers for a long time trying to hash out some of these ideas. So I appreciate everybody coming. A lot of people have been requesting how to farm sharks and I've failed multiple, multiple times. A lot of people have failed with me trying to come up with these ideas. This idea I came across randomly on accident and I'm glad I did. So without further ado, let's get into it. Real quick before we get started, I accidentally came across this uh, method on how to do this. I was floor stacking, trying all kinds of methods. I've been doing this for months, trying to get shark fishing to work. Accidentally found it, and all it came down to was something as simple as this. This right here is the core mechanic to shark fishing and how to do it. If you can incorporate this. If you can incorporate this to any design that you want, as long as you have these core pieces in your base, you can do shark fishing. The main footprint of this is gonna be a two by two uh, with some triangles kind of hanging off of it. Throughout this video, I'll try to pause and show you the exact lines that I'm talking about. Uh, but for this, we need the correct height. In order for me to do this, uh, if you go out here, there's too many waves. The water's really inconsistent. But if you go up to the shore, it's really calm. That's where I like to place this foundation. Now, I like to place the very bottom edge of this foundation right up against the water, flush with the water. So point it directly out where you want it to go. Now take that bottom edge and place it flat against the water. Now, in order to build, in order to farm sharks, I believe you have to be two walls deep in the ocean in order to farm them. I think it's like five meters. But when you're building out, this would be the equivalent of one wall and we need to go two. So now that we got two walls deep, I like to build the two by two and just check to make sure that you can build triangles all the way around. Now for this, you can set this up any way you like, but there are some mandatory triangles that we're gonna have to place. And for me, it's like this. So this is gonna be the mandatory footprint for this build. And also, I like to have my doors underwater so you can just swim to fishing village, not have to get in any fights. So I face the door right towards the fishing village, just like that. And then enclose. Now I'll be using stone just to make this a little quicker now also to save on some price you do not need those two foundations right there i'm going to try to make this as cheap as possible for you guys there are ways to get a little bit cheaper but it's a little bit weirder i'll show you guys uh, at the end of the video different ways to build the base so once you got this footprint i just follow it up Now, once you're here, this is going to be where your first decision is made. Uh, if you want more storage, it's going to lie in these pieces. Uh, for me, for this example, I'm going to leave this wall out. I'm going to close it off. But again, if you want more storage, just incorporate these triangles into the build. If not, you could cut them out and save on some costs. But for this example, I'm going to put this TC facing the ocean, block this off, 
follow it around. Now for this, I'll show you why this needs to be, why you shouldn't block this off. But for now, go ahead and fill the rest in. You'll have something like this. Now, I recommend building these in twig. Put your doors on. These triangles right here. I recommend keeping them for twig right now. Now, with your back against the flat wall, this twig floor right here is going to be met with a half wall. And then a door frame. Then you could go ahead and get rid of these two. You don't need them. Have that free floating door frame. Now, these two twig pieces are what the ceiling is going to be put on. But I recommend grabbing a door. It could be wood or sheet metal. It doesn't matter. This is going to be what pushes the bobber. But I recommend putting this early. Because if you don't, after you put the ramps up, you won't be able to place that door very well. All right, from here, we can put our ramps. Now, normally I would like to keep, I would like to keep this twig if I could, just to save on some cost or uh, if I mess up, be able to destroy it. But that's why I'm gonna leave these twigs so you can destroy those pieces if you mess up the sandbags. Here, I'm just gonna use wood. Gives me a really easy lineup to do, place all these sandbags first try. We're gonna be right in the center. Right in the center crack of these two between the big one and the small or the uh, fourth tile down and we want to get right on top as best we can All right that's pretty good now with the sandbags something you got to keep in mind is there's two different sides as you rotate it by pressing r i like to always have the sandbag if you look at the middle piece right here there's one that's sticking out farther than all the rest. I always like to have that on the right. As you switch it around, you can see the difference. So with the middle sandbag sticking out to the right. Now, what I'm trying to do here is there is a moss section on the bottom right. And I am trying to take the tip of the bottom right of the sandbag and cover, cover that mossy spot completely. So as you look at the bottom right of the sandbag, I like to get it right when the blue just covers the entire mossy area. So as you look at it from an angle, it's completely covered. Go ahead and place. Now I like to walk over here and we're going to be on the top of this middle tile, highest one. Again, try to get right in the center. Now I like to get right where the moss meets the wood as best you can. Then once you're here, one baby step to the left, sorry, I stand up now with the sandbag in the correct order. Again, with the middle piece sticking out to the right. I am now looking at the bottom left of the sandbag and lining up the bottom left tip of the sandbag with this shingle line right here. Also as close to this sandbag as possible. So as we're looking at the bottom left of the sandbag, I'm trying to have the tip just under the shingle and as close. Then I go ahead and place. Now what this did effectively was created a little bit of a lower lip because we can't close this gap off and the bobber's gonna get stuck. So now that the bobber's gonna get stuck, we're gonna have to place this sign 
as low and as far over to the left as possible to bridge that gap. It won't go all the way, but try to get it as close to the left as you can, as far over to the left as you can. And then I like to keep these, place these three so the bobber is higher, a little bit farther away from the water. Now, the reason why I said we should keep this open, you can close this off if you want to, but with having that closed, what that does, again, as you try to place the sandbag, it cuts it off early. As you can see with the, the right of the sandbag, it kind of goes to the doorknob. As you can see, the right side kind of barely makes it just past the doorknob, which is fine, but it's going to make it harder. But when you remove the wall, as you can see, it allows us to go a little bit lower than what you you would with the wall there. Again, it's your preference, but it's going to make it a little bit harder. So for me, I'm keeping it open. I like to have my sandbag again orientated in the correct direction with the middle piece sticking out to the right. I squat, make sure I'm angle just straight down. I don't want to be angled to the right or to the left, kind of straight down. And now I like to take the tip of the middle sandbag and try to line it up as best you can with the crack in the door, right in the crease of the door. So as we're staring at the middle right of the sandbag, try to make it have it touch the middle of the door. Go ahead and place. This one's not as important as these two. All right now, your setup should look like this. In order to get our button set up, you can either do it like this and put the button here. But for me, I like to put the TC probably facing facing the ocean. And just turning that into a door frame, putting the TC behind there, coming out here. And placing this here. This allows for your button to be right in front of you. Place the door controller, connect it to your door. test make sure that opens now gonna be a couple things we have to test uh, in order to throw these the farther to the farther to the right that you go the harder you'll have the harder time you'll have finding the bobber to be blue as you go to the left you'll see that the bobber starts to turn blue all right so for rule of thumb, if you're standing right on the top, I like to hang over to the left, kind of where this 2x4 is, in line with the 2x4. That's kind of my go-to spot. But if you can't find blue, just keep shimmying to the left and try to throw it as close to the door as possible. Now, it should, the bobber should go up just like it did without any help. And roll down, allowing you to catch it instantly. If the fish stays a little bit longer, it, it is an instant catch. Now, there's a couple things, if you don't get it exact, that can go wrong. Especially with the sandbags, if you don't get the right angle, that is why I have you keep these twigs. So you can break this. So you can break these ramps and restart because you can't pick up these... You could pick up the paint signs, but you can't pick up the sandbags. Once they're there, they're there. I'm sure you could break them with a sword or something. I'm not sure. But I would just take out that twig and reset the ramps. Now, there's a couple things that can happen. If you mess this up and say this sandbag is messed up, 
and you don't want to fix it, you don't want to destroy the ramp, and the bobber's getting stuck here, even with your paint signs, some things you can do is go to this side, try to have the bobber bridge the gap this way. This doesn't work every time, but it's a pretty solid option if nothing's working. So this also bridged the gap. This doesn't fit over here. You can always move these signs. They're a little weird. But you can get them to rotate for you. Now the only thing is, is that we have raised the elevation for the bobber. So sometimes it might not actually make it over the hump. But let's see what happens. Now, that happened because I didn't throw it close enough to the door, and I'll show you how to solve that problem too. Let's see if we could get this up. Now, as you can see, you could get it to go all the way down again. Now, I do always... Another thing that happens is I'm always falling off this thing and it's uh, pretty annoying trying to jump back on. Uh, so for my sake, I do like to put this here, but just know that if you're staying on this platform and not on the ramp, you can throw it pretty easy. But there's a couple problems that'll happen. As the bobber comes down, you will not be able to actually collect the fish. As you can see, it gets bugged right here. You can't pull it up. You can hold it as long as you want. You won't be able to get the fish. So just know that if you put this here, that you still need to be on this ramp. This two by four is probably the max distance where you can catch the fish. All right. Now, if you ever get it and you're just throwing it too short, and it's not actually lifting it up all the way. If I could give you an example like what happened last time. Well, it's working too well. What happens is the bobber rolls and it doesn't make it all the way up and it ends up coming back down. So what you can do is open this door and you can see where the edge of this is. What we're gonna end up doing is just placing a sign now, if you place the sign too high, place the sign too high, this tip that's sticking out will actually block your bobber from rolling down. So we like to go kind of even with it. And right where the edge of it is, you don't have to be too exact. You could kind of go back a little bit if you want to. But we're gonna create a ramp for the bobber. You might have to play with how you place that that sign a little bit to make it work. I'll go ahead and throw it. See if it works. Still works. Perfect. And now for storage and stuff like that, obviously I wouldn't recommend having this be your main base or anything. You want I'll give you an example of what um some of the storage you can put stuff right here this is kind of what the footprint is looking like for storage if you ever wanted to open things up like this wall you can this will allow you to have A little bit more room, more manageable if you want. You can make it as big as you want, obviously. If you need to, you can also extend the backside out. And have even more room. It's all up to you. If you guys need help with any of this, uh, I think I'm gonna open up a Discord uh, for this video. I'll put it down in the description. Uh, so I'll open that up to you guys. If you have any questions, I 
I try to pay attention to that as much as I can. Or just let me know down in the comments if you need help. I'm willing to come out to these servers and help you guys build any of these if you need. Now real quick, I just want to show you there are ways you can get it smaller, more compact. This is the smallest I can possibly make it for you guys. It's a little bit more difficult. What I would do is place floor here and a door frame. We're going to have to remove that. Also, the TC is going to have to go behind here. And how we did that was just by extending, not placing walls here. Being able to put the TC up here, right behind this door. Now, everything else would be the same, but this is why I don't recommend this method. Unless you have somebody really watching over you once you get to this point. You are not able to place sandbags when there is a roof. over your head so you have to do this you have to be able to do this really fast while you're not looking at people and you're also going to have to do all three sides also before you place that This is the absolute smallest you can have it. Just enough for. Barely gives you enough room for a barrel. And you're going to have to move your button down here. There might be some other spots you could put it behind the wall, but I don't know if you want to look at that. But this would be the absolute smallest. Real quick again, I just wanted to show you guys what the bases look like out of water. Uh, they look pretty big. Uh, I tried to reduce it as much as I could, but most of it is hollow as you come inside. The build cost isn't too great. This is the one I showed you guys the main build video of. Uh, there's other ways you could kind of skin a cat and try to make it cheaper for yourself. If you're okay with people trying to soft side you, Obviously, you can upgrade these to metal if you wanted to, but there is a way to remove kind of the bottom floor and still have the same effect while you're on the inside. And also, this was the other one that I showed you that you can make pretty cheap, but again, it comes at the risk of having the having the roofs be off while you're placing the sandbags. So there you have it. There's uh, three designs. You could obviously make whatever you want. 